Hey, this is Matt. Once again, welcome back to another video. There's another paid request, this time from Matthew. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos or topics or reactions or randomness or whatever, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Now, this is for a an episode of a cartoon I had never heard of called Tarantula. Now, of course, based on the title, I thought you know, it was about tarantula but no it's it's a show that was on tbs you know the superstation it lasted only like 10 episodes it was in 2017 one of the big guys behind it was a guy named carson mel who i'm not the most familiar with and apparently the basis of the show was the the creator Said that he was getting tired of a lot of these cartoons that had this anti-hero humor. Where it's humor based on people not liking each other or being mean to each other. So he's like, let me make an episode where you have the lead guy actually be a nice guy. And I will say, based on the this episode, it at least made it seem a bit different. A bit unique compared to the other cartoons like Family Guy, Simpsons, South Park, others. And it does have a bit of a relaxing mellow tone. And that's the thing I would say about there's a relaxing mellow vibe. Like to the lead guy, the way he talks, he's very easy going. He try to be nice to everybody. Like he meets this homeless guy. Oh, you, you, you truthful about that one to work for food? Well, let me see you ret. Well, I haven't done that in a while. No, 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 no. I mean, just stand up. Okay. I'll get you some food. And the guy's helping him get stuff from a tree. And, like, the, the guy's a tattoo artist, and he lives around this, like, hotel. And it's about the residents that live in this area. And just his day-to-day -day life. And this is pretty much talking with the homeless guy about how he got this dog. And showing this dog that he named Seesaw to his buddies. It gets picked up by the pound. And a break in to save this dog. Which they end up saving all these other dogs. And I can see that it didn't catch on. Because. I mean I appreciate it's different. Kind of more mellow humor. But I wouldn't say it was laugh out loud hilarious. And I would not be surprised. If a lot of people felt the same way. I mean. It made me smirk. I think he's a tattoo artist. He's talking to this lady. And he's like, oh, I could freestyle some shit onto you for $40. I'm like, were they allowed to curse? Like on, if, especially for TBS, were they allowed to curse? Or am I just watching like an uncut version of it? Because I swear he just said shit. <laughs> but it's because of the more mellow way of doing the humor, it gets, gets some smirts out of me. Like... He's doing touch-ups on this tattoo on someone's back. And this little towel is bloody. And he loses it. And how casually he goes, oh shit. <laughs> and you actually do have people trying to be nice to each other. And that did make it a little bit more, like I said, different. Because a lot of times it's not the case. It's people doing bad things to people. I did mean, that, I mean, as the creator called it, anti-hero humor. At one point, he gets, he's chasing this dog, he gets stuck in a tunnel, and there's a kid there. And the, he's asking help from the kid. And he says something like, no, listen, hey, man, I'm not trying to get kid tickled, I'm just trying to get free. So the kid goes, I thought it was going to be some, okay, he's going to steal his money, or he's going to do something like that. No, the kid actually gets the guy out. I'm like, okay, that was unexpected. I mean, I thought the kid would like, kick him in the face, or... Did steal his money, pickpocket him something, but oh wow, the kid actually did help him, and you actually do have people trying to be decent individuals, which is again not always the case in a cartoon. So 
So you have this one, as he's showing off the doll, this one guy who is, I think, voiced by a guy named Jacob Vargas. Does I remember that voice sounded familiar? I think Jacob Vargas was in Ernest Goes to Camp, the newer Hills of Ice Part 2. I think he was in Next Friday. I think he was in Next Friday, kind of your. He's a guy across the street of the, the three sort of villains of the piece. <clears throat> I forgot his character's name in Next Friday. I don't like closed doors around here. It made me go crazy. I think that's Jacob. I think he's the voice of this. And he's fucked with the dog. The dog bites him in the mouth. He goes to the hospital. The dog is taken to the pound. I didn't just... It was, inter it was interesting to see different types of voices where people are much more mellow okay if they, if everyone has the appropriate footwear let us go but again I just see people watching going what's this about like why are they talking like this and maybe there's a reason why most people use the anti-hero humor because you know they think of it as a cartoon and they just you need more of that biting humor or biting satire. So, thus you have a show that purposely lacks bite compared to others. So people think maybe it's a bit too quaint or a bit too meh. And this one, I did that. I thought it was an okay. I mean, I just saw the first episode. It was okay. But... I would say it's kind of like a more mellow version of Teen of the Hill. I mean, I would say Teen of the Hill has a bit more on tap in terms of humor compared to this, but it's a little bit more of a mellow version of that. And as I said, there are moves that they made me smirk. Like when they'd gotten the dogs out, and there's a security guard, and the two guys have their hands up, but then there's a lady. Oh, I'm just, you know... Seeing what the trouble is around here. This is your concern. And then she goes. Oh your concern huh. Maybe does the concern involve. Your dinner. And then she like pushes him down. Oh just the way she said that. The the, the voice acting is not too bad. I would say again. A bit more of a mellow cartoon. A bit more. I don't know how to put it. Quaint. Quiet. It was off the beaten path. It was interesting to watch. I, did, I could see why it didn't last too long. But I didn't think it was bad or anything. It was, I didn't. It, at least it was a little bit different. It was someone trying to do something a little bit different. That you know didn't pay off. Plus I don't know many people that go to TBS. To go watch cartoons. That's what I'm like, It was on TBS. It's probably another reason why it didn't last long. Because unless you're on something like... It was Fox or, or Comedy Central. like No one really thinks of TBS. No one really thinks of the Superstation. That's why like Conan O'Brien, when he got to TBS, I'm like, well, no one's going to watch really TBS. No one really watches TBS much. More people watch TNT than TBS. I mean, maybe back in the day when, you know, they were, but it still felt like more people would watch TNT than TBS. So maybe the, the channel was a culprit and not lasting long either. Yeah, you know, the animation, basic, it was basic, it was fine. I've seen better, I've seen much worse. The, oh, the theme song... It just kind of plays into what the creator was saying. Your TV doesn't like you, but I do, but I do. And I'm sure people are like, what is this, a fucking hippie show? This is some hippie shit? Hippie do da? I mean, but yeah, I mean, this is the dude from the Bill of did he create this fucking show? The dude abides. But... It's kind of was it's, it was there. Yeah, I didn't mind it. I didn't mind it, but I didn't love it. 
but I didn't. It was interesting to see something I'd never even heard of. That's one of the, the fun stuff about doing this and getting these requests is to know about stuff I'd never even heard about. So thanks, Matthew, for that. So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.